Welcome back to Up the Villa podcast. Welcome to our predicted lineup. And I'm delighted to be joined by Ryan and Hannah for the predicted lineup. Generally, I'm, I'm doing these on my own. Um, so I'm so happy that I've got you to to talk about European football, to preview it as well, sort of before it really kicks off. Obviously, I've already done the match preview and it's gone down quite well. So cheers, everyone, for enjoying it. Um, but we'll get Hannah's thoughts first, because I imagine Villa and European Knights don't really come together for you, do they? So this is probably uncharted territory, Um Basically, because you're a lot younger than us and we haven't been in <laughs> Europe since 2000 and something. So um, how are you feeling about watching Villa in Europe competitively? Yeah, well, we had a, we've had a little taste, haven't we, so far? But it feels like this game is the first time we're properly getting stuck into the real business now. So it's very exciting. I think it must have been 2010. Last time we were properly in Europe, um, I was about 10 or 11 years old. So now at the age of 23, I can finally see Aston Villa play in Europe, which is very, very nice um, and very long awaited. So I'm, I am excited. I think it's like just a whole new atmosphere, a whole new set of challenges. It's, it's so silly, really, because it's still just a group of people kicking the ball around. But Everything feels so different when you're playing in a European competition. Um, I was watching Luke's match preview to try and get in the get in the spirit of things and learn a bit about our opposition on on Thursday and just kind of putting myself in that um, in the shoes of the players walking into a European stadium and the opposition fans and the fanfare of it all. It's a really exciting time and I think we've just got to go head over heels diving deep um in the excitement of it all don't worry about what's going to happen and just enjoy every minute because ultimately we actually don't know <laughs> when we might get this chance again hopefully it's every season from now on but it's taken us that long to get here that you just you, you want to appreciate it while we've got it so I'm really excited I think it's going to be a good test for the players as well a lot of them obviously have had European experience but none of them have ever done it at Villa and in a Premier League team for the most part. So it's it's going to be a great challenge for them. And obviously we get to see another bit of Unai Emery's pedigree. We know he's spent it, all of his managerial career in and out of Europe, um, winning titles. He's the master at it. So we're going to get to see another level of, of his coaching ability as well, which is really exciting. So all in all, positive vibes all round. And I think... After the first couple of games, we'll probably start to get a feel of how Villa are planning to approach the competition. And I imagine starting on Thursday, it's going to be hopefully quite strong with a strong lineup. Yeah, it, it does add a different dimension, um, even for me, really, because ever since we've started this fan channel, we've sort of been in the Premier League. That that's all we've ever known, the Premier League. And I think sometimes, as as football fans, you get so like tunnel vision for the Premier League. Sometimes you might not be aware of what goes on outside of the Premier League. And when I was doing that match preview in that episode that I did in the, in the international break, and I was researching like these teams that I've never, ever watched before. I've never watched Legia, never watched Mostar. Uh, obviously, I've seen a bit of AZ Alkmaar in their league and, and you know, watching European competitions, they're, they're in it pretty much all the time, aren't they? So you have a bit of a better understanding for them. But it was even different for me, like researching stuff about something that I don't even know anything about. And I was listening to Consa talk about it before on his interview. And he was sort of saying, like, I don't watch the Polish league. I don't know nothing about Legia. I'm going to have to be sort of like guided by Unai. And Unai is going to show us what they're all about and how they play because I've never watched them before. And I, and I was kind of thinking like, even for players like, you know, maybe some of the players that don't play for international teams, it is going to be different for them. It is going to be a different approach. And he even spoke about like the atmosphere in the stadium. He was like, 
I, I've heard that the atmosphere is like really good there. And I'm like, he's actually like talking like a fan. Like, yeah, yeah I've heard that they got a lot of fireworks and fires in the stands. Like, so it, it was just interesting to hear him talk. So if anyone's not watched Conta talking, it's on uh, Villa's YouTube. So, uh, Ryan, I think you will remember some European nights then. So, uh, how are you feeling like heading into a European campaign? Very excited, mate. Very excited. Yes, I dined out, dined out heavily <laughs> on European football when I was growing up. Um, you know, my, my, you know, my first season was the 93 94 where we won the League Cup, and a couple of seasons after we won the League Cup again. So, with winning them competitions, Europe followed. We had some great nights. I was there for that Colin Moore goal. I was only a kid then, and the, and the way the whole end rattled. You know, it was loud for Duran's goal at the weekend, but <laughs> that Colin Moore goal was something else. And then, obviously, under O'Neill, we had um, the Ajax game at Villa Park, which was tremendous. I went to Hamburg as well um, on the coach that took about three days. But for the love of Villa, you, you do them sort <laughs> of things. And uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's brilliant. I, I do remember vividly, uh, that rapid Vienna game, like they'd done us the season before, we, we drew him again and thought, surely not. I remember being at work and I hadn't got a ticket, and the match day was ticking along. And I thought, oh, should I go? Should I go? I remember it being a bit drizzly, like, so, oh, nah, nah. And then uh, in the end, I went, yeah, of course I'm going, of course I'm going. So I got myself down there, and then the disappointment of that night, and I would never ever take it for granted again because the, the, the time scale that's gone on. Um, and what's gone on in between the relegations and scrapping for survival and promotions and, you know, everything that's gone on in between, we've, we've missed this European football. And like you say, um, it's, it opens up your horizons again to, to what's going on throughout Europe. You know, a lot of these teams I've probably heard of when I was playing football manager on the, on the PC or, or your FIFA games or something like that. But we're actually, we're actually playing them again now. And like, yeah, you know, I watched that Conza interview as well. And, you know, for, for people like him, for people like John McGinn, I'd even put Martinez in, in in that same category that have been on this journey, but never really played European football. It's crazy that our goalkeeper is a World Cup winning goalkeeper that's played alongside Messi, but club football in European competition, not a lot. So it's exciting. It's exciting for them. It's, it's you know that journey that they've been on as well. We've been on it, and and you know group stage, it's getting proper. So. Um, yeah, looking forward to the looking forward to the tie. And uh, some little bit of Villa news that well, it's not Villa news. It's a it's a Villa image which I think everyone when they see this image that I'm about to put on the screen is going to be over the moon. Hannah, what are your thoughts about this? Brilliant! So happy. <laughs> um, I hadn't actually seen this photo. I had. A little excited message come up in the WhatsApp a, a, a couple of hours ago that Ramsey was back in training. Um, and I, I was a bit surprised. I wasn't sh too sure when we were due to see him back. I, I thought it was going to be around October. So if we get him possibly a little bit sooner than that, that'd be brilliant. Obviously, he needs he needs a bit of time, doesn't he? He's got to get, get his match fitness back up and then sharpener. So could be a little bit before we see the best of him again, but it's such a boost. We've really missed him. Like, I don't remember when he actually got injured now, and especially at the time, I didn't think he would be out for the length that he has been. So it, it will be a big boost to have him back. And he'd become a mainstay, hadn't he, in this team and, and someone that we were consistently relying on. So to take that out, I think it has been a big loss and I'm sure Emery will be really happy to get him back in the team. Definitely. It just adds a complete different dimension to us going forward as well. So I think, again, another player's back now. And in, with the Buendia and Ramsey being out, it felt like, you know, they're, they're massive players. But kind of having one of them back now really does sort of give us a little bit more going forward as well. So we are going to be doing our predicted lineup in a second but I just want to show you the prediction of how uh, Legia Warsaw are going to be setting up in this game as well. So it's a 3-4-3, five at the back potentially if Villa can push their players uh, backwards in a different area. Um, Josu is their main creative player. So their front three is a front three that plays quite narrow and their width is going to be looking to come from 
these two players here. Their right hand side is pretty, pretty strong with um, the, the wing back and Picard up top as well. Um, so I think for Villa, it's all about pushing these players backwards and making sure it is a five at the back so they can't get out and territorially we're keeping the ball and we look very very um comfortable with it so um with that being said then let's have a look at how we think villa are going to line up and i did mention on the match preview that i was going to let hannah and ryan have the floor so i am going to do that so We'll kick it off then, Hannah. You can do. Um, Ma are you going Martinez in goal? I'd say so, for a couple of reasons. Obviously, he's the favourite, but I think if we're going to do a real run in this competition and potentially get to the final, you want him to be the keeper that does it. You can't really give it to Olsen and then take it off him later on. It feels a bit cruel. So, I would I'd stick with Martinez for sure. Okay, fire away at that back four then. What would be your ideal back four going into this? So, I think we've alluded to the fact that we are expecting a strong lineup. I don't see it being a complete new 11. Um, that being said, I think we're going to go with cash. I don't see why we wouldn't... Um, especially kind of how he's been playing recently. I think we really are benefiting from his new sort of attacking ability, freedom, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I think we'll stick cash in. The, obviously, there's a potential that we switch it up and we maybe play cons out there. But if we're going in my world, we're going with cash. <laughs> um, and then a centre-back <laughs> partnership. Um, <laughs> I think we're probably going to change that a little bit. Um, I think he may rest Pau um, and stick with Konza. Konza's on the pre-match media duty. That always sort of makes me think he's going to start. I think we might go Konza and then potentially uh, Long Bay. Um, I hope I'm... Oh, Ryan, where right. is he? Where <laughs> is he, Ryan? Long Lai? What a oh, shocker. no. You've <laughs> had a shocker. Terrible. Have we got the, uh, <laughs> the blank the blank one? <laughs> Sorry, we'll mate. I noticed a... on the <laughs> on the weekend he didn't have a graphic on the at Villa Park either. You've, so noticed, you've noticed on the weekend. You haven't notified me. You got me on screen, <laughs> and you've hammered me. Pull me out to dry here. <laughs> no worries. Um, so I think I think we'll go with Longley. Probably he, he could probably do with some minutes. Um, and given obviously, <laughs> Powell's played a lot of football. Carlos is missing, so. I feel like it's maybe a natural time for him to step up. And then if he's fit enough, I hope he is. He made the bench at the weekend. Hopefully we can see a bit of Alex Moreno. Um, that would be a nice nice little treat, I think. Uh, I think we we've, we have mostly been impressed with Luca Dean's start to the season. Um, again, another assist, I think, at the weekend. So, um it's not really a, a, a drop, so to speak, but I think Moreno needs the minutes. Um, so it'd be good to to get him back in the squad, uh, even if he just does maybe the first half or 60 minutes, we'll see. But um, it also means that Cash can hold back a little bit and he can take on that more attacking role um, and see how we get on with that. But that would be my back five. Yeah, I think I... Yeah, I think I, I agree with it. I think... I do think someone in that back line is going to be rested. And I think like with what we keep saying, that we've got a complete squad now, haven't we? So when one player is out, it doesn't necessarily mean that we are becoming weaker. May he might stick with Luca Dean. I think maybe he could potentially stick with him, but I think, like you say, Moreno needs minutes. We've got that um, League Cup game next week as well. So I think for someone like Moreno as well, he might get minutes in that game. Uh, Ryan, do you want to add anything on the defence? Are you on the same lines or? No, slightly different. Slightly different. I think 
we'd keep the same back five as um, Sunday. I do agree with Hannah that uh, Moreno needs minutes, but I think they will come when he comes on for Luca Dean. I think he starts Luca Dean. Uh, for me, my thinking beyond the team, I rank this game probably the second hardest. I think um, AZ Altmar away probably ranks the hardest, and then this one second. Altmar at home, yeah. this one at home, and then the two Monza. So I think he, he starts stronger. I think he, he, he sticks with power, and I think he sticks with Luca Dean, and then maybe we try and get our noses in front, kill the crowd, which is going to have to be our initial objective just to kill that crowd and then maybe bring on the substitutions um, in place. Yes, unfortunately we are in Hannah's world for the back four. Yes, so we are. It, it, it does have to stay. So, Hannah, that is the back four <laughs> locked in. It's a, that's on you now, Hannah. <laughs> All right. Right. <laughs> Ryan, <laughs> double pivot time. What, what are you going with double pivot? So, I was thinking the right side of the double pivots is Abubakar Kamara. Okay. I think what we saw at the weekend um, with him dropping into that back three, um, I think that he picks up that type of role again, especially with, uh, especially with the wide players for this game as well um, in the opposition. So I think that extra cover will just allow Cash that little bit more licence and freedom to to really push back them wing-backs, but not leave us exposed. You know, Kamara could cover that gap. So I think Bubakar Kamara keeps his place. Um, and then I think that Yuri Tillemans comes in. Um, I was actually watching the highlights of Leicester versus uh, Warsaw. Um Unfortunately for Tillemans, that Leicester lost there. They lost 1-0 in the Europa Conference um, a couple of seasons back. Um, I, I just alluded to the, the, the crowd and the noise, and it, and it did look good, and it did look noisy. But it looks like a nice stadium, and it, a nice pitch. And the fans, they're not right on top of you. You know some of these grounds where they're, 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 they're sitting there right on the touchline? It, it's... They are a bit set set back and it looked a nice place to play. So I think if we can kill that crowd and start dominating the ball in midfield, pushing their wing-backs back, then I think we'll get joy and I think Tillemans will not be on the losing team this time round. And then on that left side, Luke, I'm, I'm feeling McGinn. Um, again, like you alluded to, the, the wing play, um, the right side being heavily um, attacking from, from Warsaw. I think uh, McGinn... Would come in there again just to just to offer that bit more protection, um, and and it, and he's a threat going forward as well, isn't he? In that in that roaming roaming position there, and then on the right side of midfield, I was going to go uh, Mr. Leon Bailey. Okay, okay. Oh, I think that Bailey. Yeah, go on then. Go on then. I'll go Bailey then. Um, where is he? He keeps he scrolling is. past it. Oh, there number, he is. Number there he is. Again, okay, just okay. just for the just for the wide play loop to try and push yeah. him right back and, and and get him behind the get him behind the fullback as well because you you know Bailey will go into that position. Um, so that that that's my thinking behind my midfield four in Ryan's. Cool. My my one you kind of alluded to a question that I was going to ask you. Do you think it's going to be left back, right back, go forward like Palace because of their wing backs and try and push them back or do you think we just do that one where the one side's heavier um, no I'm not <laughs> thinking beyond Kamara so cash and oh yeah you hear me yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> you hear me yeah, I thought you'd nodded off for a second, mate. All oh, right, no, 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 I'm still here, mate. I'm, I'm trying to get into the head of Unai, and I just uh, sort of got lost in translation then. But yeah, I do, I do think it'll be a bit more balanced. I think, yes, the two full backs will go on, and that was my thinking behind Kamara <laughs> dropping in just to give it that bit of support, and then McGinn and Bailey possibly getting in behind. I don't know whether we'd let them come on to us a bit as well, so we could try and exploit them in behind as well. So, um, that could potentially be an option, and you know, it's interesting to see how uh, Unai will attack this one. Hannah's world. Let's continue with that with the front two. 
What are your front two for this game? Well, Ryan and Hannah's Wells collided for the midfield because those were the players. Oh, really? I had chosen. Yeah. Go on then, because they, because they, uh, he, he digged your defense out, so you have his midfield <laughs> now. <laughs> um, no, I did. I chose. I chose those four. Um, I, I think we'll have to rest Douglas Louise. Plays a lot of minutes. Um. The front two, um, I think we will potentially start Zaniolo again. Um, on that left side, again, see how we can link up potentially Moreno, if not uh, Luke Dean again. Um, I thought it was some good, some good cameo minutes uh, at the weekend. One thing, perhaps just carrying the ball a little bit too far for, or for a little bit too long, but in general, I thought he looked quite exciting. Um, and we could use some of that, I think, some of that physicality in a game like this. Not going to be an easy one, is it? So, um, gone with Zaniolo. Um, potentially, again, if Bailey plays, I don't think we'll we'll see DRB. But if if Bailey yeah. doesn't play, then obviously we'll, we'll see Musa come in. And then I think we may start John Duran. Really? However, if, we, if we're being realistic... I think Ollie Watkins needs a goal. Um, mm-hmm. So I would probably prefer Watkins to start. But John Duran, his, his minutes per goal ratio is very good at the minute. And it's the type of game where Uno might think, right, we'll, we'll stick him on and see how he gets on and then bring Watkins on a bit later. I don't know. I, it's a bit funny at the minute because you don't know, like Ryan said, if if he starts with his strongest team like from the weekend, gives them the run to try and get a lead and then we take a few players off in the second half or the other way around, do we give some of the slightly fresher players the minutes early on and then bring some of the um, more seasoned play, players in later? So I don't know. I think that will massively depend on sort of what Unai's tactic is. But I'd probably stick with Watkins, although... Also, wouldn't be surprised if we see John Duran start. Yeah, I in my head, I I thought coming into this episode, I thought Diaby was going to be on the bench, and I thought Bailey was going to come in. So I kind of think Bailey would go where Diaby's been playing, and then that would give the midfield here a different sort of feel to it as well. So I think it'd be something similar to that. Ryan, do you think you'll start the RB then? Well, Martin and Hannah's will start out like that. We've met in the middle. <laughs> we've met in the middle, but then we've gone our separate ways again because I know you went for Watkins in the I, I went for Watkins and um and the RB. Um yeah. Yeah Watkins and the RB. Um but I don't know. But like you said, there's a lot of minutes out there because what did we get to on Saturday? Was it 115? And we had, do we have five minutes injury time in the first half as well? So nearly, 100, kind of nearly 120 minutes were in the legs on Saturday. We've got this game Thursday, then we've got Chelsea on Sunday. So this is a, a big welcome to European club football, cup football, European football, Premier League football, week in, week out. So um, it is big, but like I say, I, I do fancy DRB in behind on that right hand side and and Watkins to to keep his place up top. Um, I did toy with Zaniola on that left hand side, but I, I sort of went with McGinn. Um, you know, Zaniola has won this competition, so um, he, he's going to be a big player in this with with all his experience. But um, but that that's what I went with. I, I, I feel like Zaniola off the bench. Duran off the bench again, Moreno off the bench again. We've got lots of options, possibly Callum Chambers uh, for cash, maybe. He, he gets some more minutes or then Donker comes on. So we've got lots of options off the bench. But I think initially that 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 crowd nullify it, try and get our noses in front, try and get the game won. Uh, so like we did against Hibs, got the game won and, and then make the changes. Um, I think we'll see a lot more of Duran in the home games and, and and as the group stage evolves. But my personal feeling is would be a quite strong, strong lineup. But <laughs> but I did have a quick look just before we come on air, because obviously Villarreal were in the Europa Conference last season. So I thought, okay, let, let's see what Emery was doing with them. And for the first game against Poznan, he made seven changes. 
like, like Pau Torres weren't playing, um, Jackson weren't playing, Dan Juma, you know, all, all, all his big guns were out. Uh, they did they did win the game. Um, and then it's sort of like, he, he made five changes, four changes, six changes. So he was he was changing it around and, and they did get out the group before before he left to come to Villa Park. So um, the history there says he, he does change it up a bit. He, he swapped the goalkeeper as well. Um, but I think for this first game, with us back in Europe, I think strong team. Yeah, and I think when you're looking at this now, it, it's a little bit different to how you were looking at Hibs because with Hibs, it was sort of like we had to win the games to go through. Whereas with this group now, yes, we want to top the group. Yes, we want to win. But there's, there's sort of like games to play. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. we've got quite a few games to play. And Emery's priority, you know, when he's been speaking, he's still the Premier League. And I think although, you know, if Villa make four changes or five changes for this game, that it's not like those changes and you're left with like a load of has-beens coming on. The players that we would rotate with anyway are very, very good players. So um, I think he, I think like you're touching on, I think he will be more inclined to make those changes. I think if you were looking at it as sort of like a knockout game or an FA Cup game or the league, I think he, he probably wouldn't make loads of changes. But I think because it's an actual group. I think he might make some changes. I mean, if I was to look at, if I was to pick three players that I think have played a lot of games so far this season, and I'm looking at Chelsea at the weekend, and, and I'm looking at our last two tough away games, and we've not really done very well. So this game at the weekend is still a really big game for Villa. Now, Powell's played virtually every game for Villa. The Arby's virtually played every game, and so has Louise. So at some point, something's got to give. Like they, they can't play every game this season. So I expect one or two of those to not play this game. What are your thoughts on that, Hannah? Definitely. I think, to be honest, you've took the words out of my mouth. Um, I'd say those are the three players, obviously, other than Watkins, that have played a lot, a lot of minutes. And not just that, they're playing some of the most like physical part of the game, some of the most athletic part of the game. Obviously, Torres being kind of the, I guess, the ball-playing centre-back. You've got Douglas Louise, who does everything um, and is pivoting the, the ball through the midfield constantly. And then Diaby who runs his little legs off. So I think you've got to make exceptions. And look, the whole point that we've spent how long talking about the fact we need squad depth is for moments like this. So we're not dropping players and we're not... It's it's giving some of them a rest so that they can come in fresh when we need them and give other players that are good players the minutes to contribute to the team and to, to stack their own time because ultimately if they're not ever give, given a chance because we've got a really good start in 11 we're never going to see the potential of some of these other players so as not as much as it's nice now to have 10 11 players on the pitch that you don't want to drop again I don't like to use that word but um you, you do need to be able to play and have a 16 17 man team that you trust any of them to come in and out so I think like like we've touched on it will depend on what Unai Emery's approach is whether he starts with the slightly tweaked team and then you know brings on some of the other players later on or vice versa but it's a massive game on Sunday and you, you'd like to think that we will go away and win that because we need to start picking up some away wins so I'm sure he'll have a very keen eye on that fixture and and want, want to keep some legs fresh for that as well. Definitely. Ryan, do you want to add anything on that? Yeah, it's going to be an interesting wait and see what Uno is, is going to do for this <laughs> game, isn't it? It's uh, it's all valid points, isn't it? It's all all valid points. And, you know, we have built this squad and, and they're all here to play and contribute. And they, and they have been, haven't they? You know, the, the contributions off the bench was, was spot on. And you, you probably look at Duran now and say, the kid deserves his chance. He's scored against Everton. He scored against Hibs when he started at Villa Park. He scored that absolute wilder, so he's chomping at the bit. So, 
Um, yeah, it, it, this team selection could go anyway, couldn't it? We, we just don't know. And I think after this selection, I think we're going to have a better idea of how we approached the rest of the group stage. Um, but Chelsea, it's a big game and it's a big game Sunday. And, you know, they're lacking in so much confidence and we want to go there like we went there last season and, and grab them three points. So um, I do agree that there will be one eye on Chelsea, but <laughs> I just got this feeling in me that, you know, this is important as well and getting off to a good start. And for me, I, I think we still start strong and then, you know, we, we bring players on to, to make an impact and, and rest the legs of everyone. Um, so, looking forward to it. Roll on Thursday, European football. <laughs> Can't love it once. Yes. Yeah. yes. Uh, and then one other little thing that I think we don't want to make a thing. We don't want this to be a bit of a problem is when we go and play in Europe, I want us to play well on that Sunday as well. And I think that's quite important. So I think this weekend is, for me, is quite big in the sense of I really don't want us to lose at the weekend because you don't want to get into that thing that every time we play a European game, it's like we're not great the next game. Do you know? Mm -hmm. Do you get that? What I'm saying. So I think that's important because did we lose to Liverpool after the Hibs game? Hmm. I think yeah, so. We I think we, I think we did, didn't we? So yeah. we don't want to repeat that process again. So um, yeah, for me, I've, although Uno is very much one game at a time, I've still got my eye on that weekend game. So uh, we'll I do. Thought, I, think the Hib, I think the Hibs away one. The Hibs away one. We went and beat Everton after that, didn't we? Yeah. So, yeah, and that was we had quite a decent a run team. where we were like three or four unbeaten. Yeah, but then obviously got yeah. I think we're going to learn a lot. We're going to learn a lot in these next four or five days of, of how we approach the rest of the competitions. Because once we get Chelsea out of the way, Everton's around the corner, and then Brighton. So um, games are coming, but well, big games are coming thick and fast. Mm -hmm. Let's win them yeah, all. It's, out. It's, yeah, it's, I mean, like you said, it's, it's it's important because we play at the weekend Chelsea, then we in League Cup action. And then we're at Premier League action. Then we're in European action. So, yeah, let's just embrace it and try and win every game we're going to. So, Hannah, score predictions then. What are you going with for this game? I'm going to go with a 1-0, Villa. Don't like a 1-0, oh. but I think... Who's scoring that goal? I think it's a good question. I've not thought about it. I think it's it's got to be. I'm trying to get in Hannah's world. That's the thing. So I'm trying it's, to it's, understand that it's not much going on. There's not not a lot. Tumbleweed, mate. Um, no, I think it'll be Watkins. Watkins needs to get on the score sheet, and uh, okay. a nice nice clean sheet would be good. Ryan, what are you going with? I am going to go with two one. 2-1 to the Villa. I'll tell you who's going to get the first goal for the club. Tillemans. Oh, Tillemans. Yeah, he'll, he'll, get that, he'll get that start and he'll get his first goal. So I'm feeling yeah, Tillemans goal. I'd say, and... I'd say um, one player that I'm 100% sure he's going to start is Tillemans. Yeah. Like, yeah. I can't I can't not see him not starting. No. Um, so, yeah. So I think he's definitely, definitely going to start. Um, so, right, so that's it then. Next time you hear from us, it will be after the Legia Warsaw game. Uh, I know someone tries to make sure that I pronounce it Legia. It is Legia, not Legia. Uh, so, hopefully, I've been saying Legia all episode. Um, so, yeah, after the Legia Warsaw game, we will be back um, and we'll give our thoughts, hopefully top of the group and then yeah the rest is just easy so uh, cheers everyone up the villa up the villa